industry needs to be flexible, that we need to be able to react uh, to change, that we need to be able to react to supply and demand still while serving our customer right on time when they when they want that. Uh, I don't know uh, what is the chicken and what is the egg. Is it uh, a full uh, uh, eff efficient uh, production that allows you to serve your customer on time? Uh, or is it uh, the need of a uh, sustainability? But at the end, both, uh, both aspects relies on the same situation on the plant. You need a system that is able to uh, perform very efficiently to react to supply and demand in order to produce and to deliver on time and with quality. And this is important for your positioning on the market in terms of customer service, but it is also helping you in terms of sustainability target. It is the best way that you have to reduce the waste into your supply chain. If you are able with a, a digitalization system to run your plant into a very smart way, in such a way that you minimize uh, the, the movement of material into your plant, in such a way as you uh, minimize the scrap generation that you are having, in such a way as you minimize the heat that you need on the steel making, on the, on the, the reheating side, side on the furnace. Doing so, you are effectively uh, not only improving your cost and your, your customer service, but you are also fulfilling your sustainability targets because doing so, you are using less energy, less uh, emission that are, being, uh, that are being produced. So there is a clear link here between what you can do with the digitalization of uh, the steel industry and the sustainability targets uh, that uh, the industry is having and which everybody talks about it. So I think the decarbonization challenge of the steel industry is for everybody just to clear. We know what to do and we know we as a steel industry, what we are contributing uh, as a CO2 emissions to the uh, world. So 8% is our stake in this CO2 emissions. And if we can change this, this will have a huge impact on the global CO2 carbon free and uh, 2050 discussions, which we all uh, discussed also yesterday, the financing banks are also looking towards this. And with this challenge, basically, we have already found a solution 20 years ago. And as I said, it was for us, basically, uh, uh, at that time, it was too early. We from uh, um, Autotech, in this regard, uh, would give your attention on our circuit process. So the circuit process, it's a hydrogen-based reduction process in a fluidized bed, which was already developed in the 90s with our predecessor company, Lurgy, German company, and Metzo Autotech bought this company uh, in the 90s and 90s, beginning of the uh, 2000 years. Um, Circuit used the direct reduction of iron oxide fines, making the costly and energy intensive agglomeration step um, uh, obsolete. So this is one of the uh, uh, things also from a cost savings point of view. We will also look uh, later uh, and go discuss this a little bit more. Um, and hydrogen X as the only reducing agent. ABB's smart melt shop includes the following solutions. Ladle and crane tracking. It's a, it's a new innovative way of tracking ladles using crane positionings via radars and also laser system for the transfer course and using camera-based images at the enter position of the melt shop. So no RFID tags on the ladles are used. Crane scheduling is, is using tracking information that acts upon process events such as cast the remaining time, uh, time to tap in a converter, and, and this solution forecasts the ladle movement, movement jobs for cranes and then automatically schedules the ladles. Then we also have the thermal model prediction. So by tracking the ladle thermal history and forecast of the ladle movement, the model predicts the losses and then back calculates the right temperature at the end of the ladle furnace. So the heat will then reach the caster with the right superheat and allow the caster to run at the maximum speeds. 
So this is some of the results that have been achieved at our smart melt shop installation at JSW Dolby in India. And first of all, it was the productivity improvements where our thermal model here predicts and makes it possible to bring the heat to the caster at the right heat and at the right temperature. And this does avoid the caster to slow, slow down. Crane scheduling can ensure the timely arrival of, of tapping ladles. And then we have the energy efficiency. Our thermal model has made it possible to, in average, reduce the overheating at the ladle furnace of five degrees centigrade. And last but not the least, here safety and quality aspects. A lot of communication between ground operators to, to, to track the heats and schedule the cranes can now be minimized and we can have less people in, in the hot zone. And also here, all the financial figures here is, is given by the customer. It's not uh, the figures by, by ABB. Last question to you, or one, one I think important question also to, to, to cover also the, the operability. To take all this together, all this data, you need a, a huge amount of sensors to be installed in the in the plant to collect. And we are in a very dusty and uh, harsh environment. Uh, do you have experience in terms of maintainability, let's say failure rate, and so on of these sensors? Uh, what is your experience in this regard? To be to be honest, we we from from a software viewpoint, we assume that the sensors will be there and will provide us the the information. So uh, I cannot comment on the on the stability there, but typically uh, we see that uh, our customers are now able to provide the data in a more or less reliable way. So I cannot comment on the on the quality there, but I was uh, mentioning that in in my presentation, the technological change that that happened. Uh, shows today that you have sensors that are robust and that can also uh, in, interconnect with each other uh, through uh, this, this Internet of Things and provide the data in a fairly stable way. But yes, we are still dealing with the uh, industrial environment and uh, needs to be robust. Ahmad, uh, you mentioned uh, carbon-free uh, production of DRI and uh, with hydrogen. Uh, I, I come to I'm coming from electric arc furnace uh, steel making. In the electric arc furnace, we we need some carbon uh, to form the slag and to have some exothermic energies. Uh, now, normally in a DRI process, we get a certain percentage of of carbon to be utilized. What is your experience and discussing with customers when you deliver carbon-free DRI produced by hydrogen uh, in this respect when when feeding it to the DRI, to the electric arc furnace? Uh, thank you very much, to, uh, Thomas, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the question. So basically, we discussed this also with the customer and especially also from our lessons learned from the Trinidad plant and several areas. So uh, we think that also together with the customers and our teams think that to change our flow sheet uh, will be difficult and it's better to have uh, a kind of easier for the steel makers to feed additional uh, uh, fuel to the electric arc furnaces. That would be uh, uh, um, to uh, compensate the lack of uh, carbon free. So that would be the easiest way and we will work uh, with our partners or with the customers in this regard uh, to solve this uh, uh, um, issue. Mm -hmm.